Have you ever noticed yourself repeatedly attracted to the same type of person, even when past relationships didn't work out? Or maybe you find yourself pulling away just when things start to get close. If this sounds familiar, you're not alone. And what's happening isn't just bad luck or poor judgment. It's about how your brain learned to love. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos to help you strengthen your mind, fortify your brain, and build resilience. Today, we're looking at why you're drawn to certain partners and how your brain learned these patterns long before your first romantic relationship. We'll look at the neuroscience of attachment, how early experiences wire your brain for love, and more importantly, what you can do with this knowledge. Let's start by understanding what attachment styles are. Attachment is simply the way we bond emotionally with others. It begins in our first relationships, usually with our caregivers. Through thousands of small interactions, your brain develops expectations about what love feels like, how safe closeness is, and what to do when you feel distressed or uncertain. There are four main types of attachment. Secure attachment means that you're comfortable with both intimacy and independence. Anxious attachment means that you crave closeness and fear abandonment. Avoidant attachment means you value independence and feel uncomfortable with too much closeness. And disorganized attachment means you're conflicted between wanting and fearing intimacy. Here's what's important to understand. These aren't personality traits that you're born with. They're learned patterns that your brain developed as survival strategies in childhood. So exactly how did your brain learn these patterns? Let's look at the mechanism. In early childhood, your brain is rapidly forming connections based on repeated experiences with caregivers. Think of it like this. When a baby cries and gets consistently soothed, their brain learns a fundamental lesson. When I'm distressed, someone will help me. And this becomes a template, a blueprint for how relationships work. But there's more happening than just learning. During these positive caregiver interactions, your brain releases oxytocin and dopamine. These neurochemicals create a powerful reward signal that reinforces the bond and teaches your brain what love feels like. And this is your first lesson in what connection means. Three key brain regions are involved in this process. First, there's the amygdala, which handles emotional processing and threat detection. Then there's the prefrontal cortex, responsible for emotional regulation and relationship navigation. And finally, the insula, which you probably haven't heard me talk about that much, which helps you read your own emotional states and those of others. These early interactions establish neural pathways that become your relationship operating system. And this is the foundation that determines how you'll approach love for the rest of your life. Now let's look at how each attachment style develops neurologically. When a child receives consistent care, their brain develops a balanced amygdala response combined with strong prefrontal regulation, and the result is secure attachment. They can handle both closeness and independence because their brain learned that relationships are safe. But what happens when care is inconsistent? When a parent is sometimes warm and sometimes distant, the child's amygdala becomes hyperactive. It's always scanning for threats of abandonment. The prefrontal cortex can't regulate that fear as effectively, leading to anxious attachment. The result is heightened vigilance in relationships. The brain is consistently asking, are you going to leave me? And the brain learns, I need to be loud, clingy, or dramatic to get my needs met. Avoidant attachment develops differently. When a child expresses emotional unavailability or rejection, their brain learns to suppress their needs because expressing them led to rejection from the emotionally unavailable caregiver. The part of their brain that handles self-reliance becomes overdeveloped as a protective mechanism. The lesson becomes, I can't count on anyone. I have to do it all myself. And the result is feeling uncomfortable with vulnerability and you keep people at a distance. Disorganized attachment is probably the most difficult pattern. It develops when a caregiver is both the source of comfort and the source of fear. And this creates a paradox in the brain. The attachment system says, move closer for survival, but the amygdala screams, move away from danger. The result is chaotic wiring, which makes intimacy feel both necessary and terrifying. And if this is you, 
you can experience intense difficulty with trusting people and feeling safe in relationships. So why do these patterns persist into adulthood? Your brain doesn't care about what's healthiest. It cares about what's familiar. The brain is energy efficient. It prefers to stick with known patterns, even if those patterns are painful. And this is why you can feel a magnetic pull toward the exact kind of partner who replicates your childhood dynamics. This also ties into something called confirmation bias. Once you have an attachment style, your brain unconsciously looks for people who confirm your expectations. If you expect rejection, you'll gravitate toward avoidant partners. If you expect inconsistency, you'll choose partners who give you just enough attention to keep you hooked, but not enough to feel safe and secure. And under stress, these patterns tend to intensify. Your brain regresses to its earliest defaults, the survival strategies that it learned long before you even had words. So that's why you can tell yourself you'll act differently next time but when emotions run high, those old patterns just take over automatically. So what does this look like in real life? Anxious and avoidant partners often end up together, and it's not by accident. Their attachment styles actually fit together in a way that feels familiar to both of them, even if it's not healthy. The anxious partners fears of being abandoned gets triggered by the avoidance partner's need for distance, which makes the anxious partner pursue harder. That pursuit, in turn, overwhelms the avoidant partner, confirming their belief that closeness is suffocating, and it becomes a push-pull cycle, emotionally charged, familiar, and hard to break free from. People with disorganized attachment may feel drawn to intense and unstable relationships because on a deep neural level, chaos feels like home. The unpredictable energy activates the same brain circuits that were shaped by early fear and inconsistency. Securely attached people, on the other hand, tend to choose partners who feel stable and dependable, and that mutual sense of safety reinforces secure wiring in the brain and helps both partners regulate their emotions effectively. The good news is that attachment styles aren't your destiny. Your brain is plastic. It can rewire with new experiences. By becoming aware of your patterns and practicing new ways of relating, you can gradually shift towards secure attachment. So here are some ways to start. First, recognize your pattern. Begin by observing your automatic responses in relationships. If you have an anxious pattern, notice moments when you start to worry that your partner doesn't care as much as you do, or when you feel panic if they don't respond right away. If you lean avoidant, notice when closeness feels uncomfortable or even suffocating. Notice when you instinctively pull away as soon as someone gets emotionally closer. You're not overreacting or cold. These are learned protective responses from your brain trying to manage perceived threats. Second, take small corrective actions. For the anxious brain, practice self-soothing when the urge to seek reassurance hits you. Slow breathing, grounding, or brief journaling can help you regulate your nervous system so you don't rely entirely on someone else to calm you. For the avoidant brain, Practice vulnerability in safe, gradual ways. Share something personal. Ask for help. Express appreciation. Each small act of openness helps your brain build tolerance for intimacy. And then for everyone, when you feel that familiar pull toward intensity or emotional chaos, pause and ask yourself, does this feel like peace? or like a familiar storm. That one question creates enough distance to make a conscious choice instead of an automatic one. Third, seek secure connections. Surround yourself with people who are emotionally steady, like friends, mentors, or partners who can offer consistency without judgment. And at first, these relationships might feel less exciting than the emotional roller coaster of the insecure attachment. But what feels boring to an anxious or avoidant brain is actually the sensation of safety. With repetition, your brain begins to associate calm and stability with reward instead of danger. And then fourth, get support when needed. If these patterns cause distress or keep repeating despite your efforts, 
therapy, especially attachment-focused work, can accelerate change. A therapist provides a secure base for practicing new relational patterns in real time, helping your brain experience consistency and safety in ways that it may never have before. So here's the big picture. Your choices in love aren't random, and they're not a sign that something is wrong with you. They're guided by neural patterns that your brain built from your earliest relationships, patterns designed to keep you safe, not necessarily keep you happy. But that wiring isn't permanent. The same brain that learned those old patterns can learn new ones. And with awareness, intention, and repeated experiences of safety, your attachment system can recalibrate. So this week, try paying attention to your automatic responses and relationships, or even even when you're just thinking about someone that you're drawn to. When that familiar emotional pull shows up, pause and ask yourself, does this feel like peace or like a familiar storm? That simple moment of awareness is how change begins. It's your prefrontal cortex stepping in to override the scripts and teach your brain that security can feel just as powerful as intensity. You have to remember your brain learned these attachment patterns as a survival skill. Now you get to teach it something new, that love can feel safe, steady and mutual. You're not destined to repeat the past. You're capable of rewiring your future. If you found this helpful, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss future videos on building mental resilience. Thanks for watching today. See you next time.